In this video, we are going to learn about the Indus River and its tributaries. I'm going to show you the exact place of their origin, to the place where they drain and also in between a few important places where the rivers pass by. Just to give this video some structure, the timestamps are available in the description. If you want to skip over and save some time, please do that. First, we will look at the root of the main river, which is the Indus River. The Indus River originates in the Tibetan Plateau near Lake Mansarovar. As you can see, it is within the jurisdiction of China. This is also the place where you will find the famous Mount Kailash, which is considered as the home of Lord Shiva. And it is a holy and sacred site of the Hindu religion. The Indus River rises from Mansarovar Lake, which is more than 5000 meter above the sea level. The river flows northwest and enters in the Ladakh region of India from a place called Demchok. You need to understand that here is the Karakoram range and here is the Ladakh range. After entering India, Indus river flows in between Karakoram and Ladakh range but more closer to the Ladakh range. At a place called Dungti, the river takes a sharp southwest turn and cuts through the Ladakh range and then takes a northwestern course and continues to flow towards the Leh region of Ladakh along the Ladakh range. After reaching Leh, the river continues the northwestern course and reaches the town of Batalik, which is in the Kargil district. Now this is an important place. It has been a focal point in all Indo-Pakistani wars because of its strategic location between Kargil, Leh and Baltistan. And it was also the main battleground during the 1999 Kargil war. That's how the Kargil district became the de facto border or we can call the military border or the line of control between India and Pakistan. Now the Indus river enters into the Baltistan region through the city of Sakadu and continues to flow northwest towards the city of Gilgit. Upon reaching the city of Gilgit, the river takes a south bend and then turns west and then fully enters the northwest frontier province of Pakistan, which is called Khyber Pakhtunkhwa in about 8200 kilometers. Now here is the Nanga Parvat. The height of this mountain is around 8126 meters above the sea level. You can imagine a lot of water from glaciers run down and joins the Indus River. And not just this mountain, the Indus River gets its water supply from the melting of snows and glaciers of many mountains of the Karakoram range. The river then takes a southwestern course and continues to flow across the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province. It then flows through the plain in western and southern Punjab province of Pakistan. The river continues to head towards the Sindh province of Pakistan. In Sindh province, the river accumulates a lot of sediments and forms the Indus River Delta before draining into the Arabian Sea. Now that we have seen the main route of the Indus River, let's look at the principal tributaries of the River Indus. As we know, there are five tributaries. Let's look at each one of them. The first one is Chelam. Now, Jhelum River originates from the Vedinak Spring in Anantanag district of Jammu and Kashmir. The river then flows northwestern direction towards the capital city of Srinagar. After passing through Srinagar, it flows into Vula Lake. So here is the Vula Lake, here is Srinagar and here is Dal Lake. The river then flows in the western direction and heads towards the Baramula district of JNK. After passing through Baramula, it crosses the town of Uri. This place should remind you of something. In about 10 km to the west of Uri, the line of control with Pakistan starts. The river then enters into Pakistan occupied Kashmir, which is also called POK. The river then passes through the village of Chakoti, which is in POK, and flows west towards the city of Muzaffarabad. From Muzaffarabad, the river takes the south direction and enters in the mainland Pakistan from Mirpur district in POK. The river then flows southwest and joins the river Chenab in Jhang district of Punjab province in Pakistan. 
In about 250 to 300 kilometers, the river Chenab joins the Indus River at Mithan Court. Further, as we know, the Indus River continues and drains into the Arabian Sea. The second river is Chenab. Now, River Chenab originates from Lahol and Spiti Valley of Himachal Pradesh. This region is covered with snowbound mountains and it is part of Middle Himalayas. So naturally, melting of snow and glaciers from these high snow mountains will give rise to streams and rivers. The River Chenab is also called as Chandrabhaga because it is formed after the merging of two streams, the Chandra and the Bhaga. The Chandra stream originates from the south near to Pin Valley National Park. And the Bhaga stream originates from north near Jispa and joins Chandra River near Tandi. Together these two streams or small length rivers form the river Chenab and makes it flow towards northwest direction for about 130 kilometers when it crosses the Pangi Valley before entering to Padar area of Dota district of Jammu province in Jammu and Kashmir state. After reaching Bandarkut in Kishtwa district of Jammu region, the river flows in the south direction for a distance of 34 km up to Thatri and then takes a westward course and flows across the Ramban district of JNK for about 70 km. In the Ramban district, river Chenab turns southwest direction and flows towards the town of Akhnur in the Jammu district of JNK. The river continues the southwestern course for about 25 to 30 kilometers. Thereafter, it enters into Sialkot district of Punjab province of Pakistan. Further, it flows for about 300 kilometers in the Punjab province of Pakistan. And near the Chang district, river Jhelum joins the Chenab. In about 250 to 300 kilometers, the river Chenab joins the Indus River at Mithan Kot. Further, as we know, the Indus River continues and drains into the Arabian Sea. The third river is Ravi. Now, this river originates from the Himalayan mountains in Bara Bangal in the Chamba district of Himachal Pradesh. At first, it flows in the northwest direction and passes through the town of Chamba. Then it takes the western course. After flowing for about 20 kilometers, the river turns southwest and enters into the northern part of Punjab in the Pathanko district. Now here the river becomes a source of the Ranjit Sagar Dam Lake. The river continues to flow southwest. After that, it flows across the border of India and Pakistan. After that, the river continues to flow along the India-Pakistan border for approximately 100 kilometers. The river then enters the city of Lahore. From Lahore, the river flows southwest for about 280 to 300 kilometers and joins the river Chenab. In about 250 to 300 kilometers, the river Chenab joins the Indus River at Mithan Kot. And the Indus River continues and drains into the Arabian Sea. The fourth river is Bias. It originates in the upper Himalayas from the Bias Kund near Solang Valley in Himachal Pradesh. The river starts off heading towards the south and passes through the town of Manali. After that, it passes through the town of Kullu. The river continues to flow south for about 25 kilometers and then takes a western course. It continues to flow west for another 20 kilometers until it reaches Pandoa Dam which is a dam on the Bias River. From here, the river takes the northwestern turn and continues to flow for about 10 kilometers and then takes a western turn to reach the district of Mandi. After reaching Mandi, the river again continues to flow northwest and heads towards the town of Nadaun in Hamirpur district of Himachal Pradesh. From here, it again takes a northwestern course. In about 25 kilometers, you will come across the Maharana Pratap Sagar Dam, which is built on the Bias River. The river then continues to flow northwest along the Himachal and Punjab border for about 40 kilometers. It then enters into Punjab from the Hoshiarpur district. It then reaches the Kapurthala district, 
where it joins the river Satluj at the Harike wetland. And the fifth river is Satluj. This river originates in the Tibet region of China. It is actually an extension of the river Langken Zangbo. Or in other words, Langken Zangbo River is the main source of the river Satluj. And if you see, Langken Zangbo River originates somewhere from the Mount Kailash near Mansarovar. This river enters India from Shipkila Pass. As soon as it enters India, it becomes the river Satluj. The river then takes a southwestern course on reaching the village of Chaba which comes under the Shimla district of Himachal Pradesh. Shimla is just 15 km to the south of this place. Here you will also find the Chaba hydroelectric plant which is built on the Satluj river. Now this power station was built by the British to supply electricity and water to Shimla. Anyhow on reaching Chaba the river changes its course to the northwest direction and flows in that direction for about 40 km. On reaching the village of Barmana in Bilaspur district of Himachal Pradesh the river turns in the southwest direction and flows for about 25 km that way. Again the river turns northwest here the river Satluj is held by the famous Bhakra dam. The dam forms the Gobind Sagar reservoir. Now this area is just 15 km away from the Himachal Punjab border. The river then enters the state of Punjab from the town of Nangal in the Rupnagar district of Punjab. After crossing the town of Nangal, the river flows south for about 60 km and then it turns west and passes through the Ludhiana district and reaches the Harike wetland where the Bias river joins the Satluj. The Satluj river continues to flow west for about 30 km and crosses the Indo-Pak border to enter into the Punjab province of Pakistan. Now here the river meanders around the Indo-Pak border and flows in the southwest direction for about 120 km. After that, the river enters fully into the Bahawalnagar district which lies in the southeast region in the Punjab province of Pakistan. The river continues the southwestern course and joins the river Chenab. Basically, first the river Chelam joins the river Chenab, then the Ravi river joins the Chenab, and at last the river Satluj joins the Chenab. And Chenab river as we know continues further for about 250 to 300 kilometers and then it joins the Indus river at Mithankot. And further as we know, the Indus river continues and drains into the Arabian Sea. So this was everything you had to know about the Indus River and its tributaries. I hope this video was informative and it covered everything in a comprehensive manner. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.